So hi guys, I'm making the last video. I'm putting that first so that I can just explain what has happened um, with all of this build. As you know, I wanted to make this documentary where I ordered a drift car, uh, Formula drift spec drift car built um, in underground garage in Norway. And I wanted to show you guys the whole process of me ordering it and driving to Norway and picking it up and all of that. That will come after this first part of the video. I will show you as much as I did, but not everything went the way that I wanted it. So I got the car yesterday and it is three and a half months late. So the builder broke in every single delivery date on this car. The shipping alone took about a month to to ship it here and as per the contract I was supposed to pick the car up in Norway and I was in Norway I drove up there with my RV and my trailer in tow 1600 kilometers ferry and all that good stuff and went to his shop to pick it up as agreed and they were not finished and I waited up there nine days until the car was almost finished and then the builder forgot to put oil in the engine, drove the car around on the parking lot, put it on a trailer, and then we went off to, to tuning. But at that point, the engine was already damaged. And I pretty much had enough at that point in time, and I then went home. Now, to get the car delivered at the date that I wanted, I think it was the 18th of March, uh, the builder asked me to pay 10% extra on top of what I was already paying, which I agreed to. Now, since he broke that date and uh, had me wait 14 days or something like that, and then I drove to Norway and my car was still not finished, of course I said I'm not gonna pay those 10%. And uh, let's, let's just say he got so sad about that and wanted a little bit of money for at least trying to make it which in, in a business world is fucking ridiculous. But anyways, I decided, okay, stop your whining. Here, I'll give you 5%. So he got those 5%. And I gave him a month to finish the car and deliver the car to me here at my address, race ready. Now, after that, it took two and a half months before I finally have the car here. And it's not exactly race ready. Well, the design of the car is, 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 is the wrap is not finished. It's complete bullshit. And they have also acknowledged that. And they will supposedly pay me money back. We will have to see about that. I just want to show you a couple of them. I mean, it's complete, complete crap job. The design of the back is, doesn't look good. It's just all black. And I mean, there are tons of of issues the wrap job is just really really poor um, the other thing that it was even more crazy this is a hundred thousand plus euro drift car build I paid more than a hundred thousand to have this car built right off the the the, 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 sh uh, the shipping trailer it was not a trailer like a big truck that moves cars the car was running on five cylinders so I got my race ready car and it was running on five cylinders. Now why is it running on five cylinders? Well, when your wiring is so shitty that the wires come out of the plugs and I've only tested two of them. You can see here. I've, I've not even tested those. When your wiring is that shitty, well, then you are gonna have problems. So. As you can probably hear on my voice and how I'm making this video now, I am definitely not a happy camper. The whole pro process with Underground Garage in Norway has been subpar, unprofessional. It's a one-man show in a little piece of shit garage in a industrial area and he should definitely not take on builds of this caliber. Now, what I want to do with this initial video is I want to just tell my story, what has happened, so that if anyone else is thinking about having them build a car for them, they know what they will be getting, you know? That's kind of the point of, um, 
of this video so that the truth can come out, you could say, so everyone knows. Um, and oh yeah, did I forget to say that when he then broke the engine by not putting oil in it, again, you know, really sad and it was a bullshit, I again, as the gentleman that I am, stepped up and said, you know what, I'm going to help you. Here's another 3,800 euros so that you can get the engine repaired or buy a new one for me and do it properly, you know? I mean, every step of the way, I have fulfilled all of my duties. I've sent money exactly as specified on time. I've been in Norway to pick up my car as per the contract, but it is, has been complete bullshit. Now, I've missed uh, DHB in Denmark, if I wanted to go to Gardebeedlen in Sweden, that would have been missed. In Norway, that would have been missed. Uh, Nordbergring Drift Cup um, 1, 2 and 3, I missed those. And a lot of practice um, drift days at uh, Papenburg and at Wiese. And I also missed two times Drift Camp Brunski. So pretty much my season is just toast. Everything is just fucked up. And now that I got my car, finally, I can then now start by having the car re-wrapped. I can have some of the stuff painted that was not painted the way I, I asked for. And I can then start to fix this engine stuff. And I'm sure, I'm really sure that a lot of other stuff is going to turn up when sm small stuff like this already is there, you know. Um, I just had the car lifted. There is definitely needs to be painted in the bottom of the car. Many of the places where it's been welded doesn't even have primer. There's tons of holes here and there that wasn't blocked, so smoke will definitely come in the cabin. I also have to fix all of that. You know, I'm not a picky guy, but when you pay a hundred thousand plus for something, it should be a ready to race car. It should come off the trailer, everything should function, and I should be ready just to go to a race. That is not what I got, that is what I paid for. And that is why I'm making this first part of my video, these fucking 7-8 minutes of rambling. So guys, I'm sorry uh, that I had to tell all of this, that's not what I wanted. I'm not out to destroy people, but in this case, I think the world needs to know what has gone on up there in Norway, in underground garage. Now, there's another thing that I want to say, that is, I want to say thank you to all of David's friends that helped him when I was there, staying up all night, helping him, trying to get the car finished. I want to thank you all, because you did a great job. You were true friends, and I hope that David is going to pay you some cash also, because I paid him a lot of cash, and supposedly those 10% was so that he could pay you guys to help him. So I hope all of you got some cash also. Um, what more to say? Uh, I want to say also thank you so much to Stian from um, Moonshine Racing for borrowing their, um, uh, their wheel machine and he helping me putting on all the, uh, the tires on the rims. That was super. Thank you so much. I, yeah, it's kind of, that's, that's more or less it. I just want to say thank you to the guys up there that, that really helped. And, um, now, after all of this bullshit and explaining, I will then show you the videos that I made leaving for Norway for picking up the cars and so and so and so. And uh, that's about it. Hopefully, after this bullshit video, the next videos of this car is either be, being me fixing something or it will be finally the car out and drifting. Maybe a little, a little mad burnout or some shit in my... Uh, in my parking spot outside of my garage at some point so guys stay tuned and uh yeah stay strong man stay drifting bye here i am somewhere in germany about i don't know i've been driving about three hours now i forgot to make a video in home so like the the first video of this trip but this will be the first then so i'm right some gas station getting some diesel for a car a little what is it, Burger King stuff meal whatever and um, I still have about 1500 kilometers to go uh, it's time to pick up the new drift car and get it tuned and 
go on the test track and test it out so I'm hoping this video is gonna be really good and have a lot of action but uh, first of first we have to go to Denmark and visit my mom and when that's finished we will have to go on to Norway so it's gonna be many small clips uh, in this documentary or whatever you call it I don't know video vlog video log or what you call it anyways I'm just trying to make a longer video of many small videos so you can kind of see um, the whole trip and um, yeah that's it for those you don't care about the whole trip you can just skip forward to the part where we are on the track. so I mean for those of you that wants to see everything you can for those who you don't that don't want it can skip ahead and for those of you who don't give a fuck, you can stop now. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll see you later, guys. Bye. Aboard the ship. Um, there's water all around. It's not as fast as I thought. I thought it was kind of a catamaran ship, you know, that would race up on two fins and really power over the sea but uh, I guess it's not it's not that fast I think so anyways I'm at the back of the ship just getting some air I have arrived at the underground garage here in Norway beautiful location well Norway is really beautiful an old industrial complex next to the railroad tracks and I parked my car got some power getting some water taking a shower and then I think this day for me it is just over but uh, the guys are at working crazy on the car it's not finished yet but uh, it will be Monday's tuning Tuesday's testing so down there she is the beast I'll just let the guys work and this this shop does mostly JDM as you see when you go around the corner two Supras another Toyota oh yeah and we're just next to the train tracks here So, I'm here in Norway, I just put on tin tires on uh, my new rims. Um, underground garage had a friend who had a little garage where I could go and borrow a wheel machine. And uh, this here is what they call a little garage. You can see here what... <laughs> and this here is not a commercial garage, this is just for fun. This is 10 guys just having their own race cars and having a garage together now I mean this is every boy's wet dream you know and it's it's like four five hundred horsepower five six hundred horsepower six hundred horsepower it's it's crazy everything you know here's a Toyota Toyota Supra also making building some new engine stuff and the guy who has his car here is not here he told me that he is in uh, Dubai doing uh, drifting there and uh, then they have a big bus and sh and stuff so I mean the guys in Norway they really know how to to do that shit you know and uh, here is a park just outside here and I, I, I borrowed that wheel machine and put on the, the tin tires on my new rims so I have some spares when we go testing hopefully tomorrow or day after we are a little bit late I just wanted to give you this update on how the Norwegian Vikings play so just, oh, just a small update on the video that I did yesterday in the garage when I was showing uh, the different cars um, I think the first car I showed was a black Audi, also a big turbo. I probably said it was 
four, five hundred or six hundred horsepower and it was a race car. I spoke with the owner of the car today actually, or the information I gave was not right. It's an 800 horsepower all-wheel drive Audi and it's a daily driver. It's for the road, it has a number plate. So that is fucking awesome. 800 horsepower all-wheel drive on the road. I love it. So yeah, that's just a little information for you guys. If you thought it wasn't crazy enough, that garage, it's, it's super. I like it. Finally time for tuning, we uh, just get the car out, it's a little bit too low but uh, we don't have time to adjust it, So, um, but now we go to tuning and then we can work out the box after. So hopefully the next video will be tuning. We have arrived, got the car off, the car is really 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 low but um, this we will fix later, but um, we got it off and um, connected it to the dyno the guys are getting ready um, all the guys been working all night haven't slept um, to get the car ready there were some problems with some um, I don't know some water lines or some some of the lines was leaking and I don't know apparently they had to do a lot of work to get it all sorted out but um, anyways we're here and uh, it's tuning time so I'm crossing my fingers that everything will go good today and uh, then it's back to to his uh, to the underground garage and then I think the guys are gonna sleep a little bit before they continue work uh, probably not today but I don't know exactly what is going to happen so um, see if I can make some videos when the, when it's on the dyno or at least some photos
Ford itu <laughs> This is one of those videos that uh, that I don't want to make but I have to make um, tuning well went really good uh, we made about 800 Newton meters 600 rear wheel horsepower that's about 700 horsepower um, so that was really good cooling cooling systems was fantastic it runs so cool and so nice um, Pretty much everything worked on the dyno. So the last thing to do to check if this engine is really good was to cut the oil filter and have a look. And when we cut the oil filter up, we could see there was a lot of metal flakes in the um, in the oil filter. A lot of uh, small debris. Well, not small debris, but kind of like gold dust, dust, aluminium dust. So that means that uh, the engine is damaged. So. Let me explain what, what what happened and why I'm sitting in my RV in the video that you're watching and explaining that I have to go home and all of this stuff. Now the builder, Dave De Riebe from Underground Garage, when he was finished with the car, very, very late, um, he drove it around his the area where his shop is and uh, revved it hard to get the engine hot because it was not running right. And drove it on my trailer and stuff like that and then when we came to the to the tuning shop to the dyno shop they discovered that there was no oil on the car now david reba he hadn't put any oil on the car 
So by that point, the engine is pretty much toast. I mean, no oil on an on engine would kill it. And no oil in, in, in the turbo bearings will also kill those bearings. And I think earlier in the video, later in the video, you will see that I now have some issues with the, with the turbo leaking and some blue smoke and stuff. Anyways, to get back to the point, <clears throat> So it was decided that um, if engine damaged or not, we might as well just put some oil in the engine and dyno it and just see how it goes, if it's completely broken, little bit broken or what's going on. So we dynoed the car and after the dyno, the dyno actually went fine uh, and the, car, the engine didn't show that it was damaged but um, after the dyno, the oil filter was cut and in the oil filter there was a lot of uh, metal flakes and whatever. I explained that in the video you're seeing right now. Now I just wanted to point this out <clears throat> because at the time that this happened I told David that I was not gonna tell everybody about he, him not putting oil on the car because I, think, I didn't think it was necessary to tell everybody because I mean it could destroy him as a builder and um, I said to him, if you just, I actually, I gave him 3,800 euros to help him fix the engine. I gave him that extra for free as a gift from me. And I said to him, as you will also hear in the video where I'm sitting in my, in my, in my car, that he should build it finished, deliver it to my house, race ready, and he had one month to do it. Now, of course, he didn't do all of that. It took many months and whatever. Anyways, so if anyone is questioning that what I'm saying right now is a lie or is not true, I will tell you this. We were at K, what is it called? KRB Trading in Norway. Uh, the owner is named Kai. He was there. He saw that there was no oil in the engine. He can confirm it. Also present there was Stian from Underground, no, from Moonshine Racing. He was also there. He can also confirm that what I'm saying is true. There was no oil in the car. Um, there was also um, an, a, one of David's friends, a little skinny guy, um, nice guy. Uh, it does a lot of electric work for for for, <clears throat> for David. He also was there, and he can also confirm that there was no engine, that there was no oil in the engine. So that's just a little information I wanted to add. That's about it. See you guys. We have to rebuild the engine, everything, check everything. So my builder, he have to take it all apart and rebuild everything and then continue the build. Now I have no more time to stay in Norway. Uh, my mom is sick and I need to go visit her and stay with her and also see my family. So I'm leaving Norway tomorrow and my builder here will then finish the car test the car, retune the car if needed, uh, make everything needed on the car so that when I get it uh, on a on a truck or in a container or whatever they want to, how they're going to ship it to me, it's a ready to race race car. So yeah, so the next video guys is going to be, not right now, uh, it's probably going to take a little bit of time so that you can see that it's not just so easy to to build your dream drift car and uh, it takes a lot of work and patience and so on here at the harbor in uh, Lavik in Norway so on my way home or not home on my way to to Denmark to visit mom again uh, the race car is left at the garage they have to do more work uh, I think I explained that in the last video that <clears throat> there was an engine damage and stuff so here it comes, super speed, super speed 2. So I think three and a half hours or something like that from Lavik, Norway to Denmark, uh, here itself in the top of Denmark. And then another two, uh, probably another three hours drive. Uh, oh, for sure, yeah, I have my trailer on. So for sure another three hours another three hours drive to to the place where my mom is in, in Denmark and then we will see 
I will stay there some time before I go back home in Germany. So, a quick update on the new uh, drift car build. Uh, it should be coming next week and I also sold my M3 drift car. So the owner, the new owner of it is coming to pick it up here in 10 minutes or something like that. It, uh, he got it at a really really good price. I mean I had to pretty much had to sell it. I don't have the space for it. So I sold it cheap um, and he's getting a really good car. He's getting a car and all the wheels there are four more wheels. Uh, than this and um, he's getting all of that ready to drift so hopefully the next video will be the new drift car parked here in my garage next week yep and next week the car didn't come it's probably not a surprise to anyone yet uh, by now and it also didn't come the next week and the next week and the next week about four weeks or something like that Finally, the day came where the car arrived on a uh, truck that can carry cars. So I don't even know what the name is. Piss pouring rain. I uh, had to have my brother-in-law come out and help to take the car down. Uh, was really hard and we had to put wood here and there to get it over the bumps and everything. Just not a good experience getting a brand new race car that way. Anyways, I at least I got it, but then get the car off the trailer my 105,000 euro built and as you can hear it's not running on all cylinders, you know, and I go and I check all the plugs And how do you check it you pull them all out and when you find one that doesn't say anything when you pull it out then you know that it's not firing. Not even the, the column is firing, you know? What the fuck is that? There's some tired of this. So, yeah, this is nice to get a, your new car and it doesn't even run off the trailer. Man, what the fuck, David? Yeah, that's a really bullshit. So, I then had to start investigate on my race ready car why is it running on five cylinders well if your plug connectors when the wires are not secure in there and not only in that one but also in that one and i haven't even tested the others when when the, these things are not secure then you are not running on all cylinders and i really think that's a very sucky way to get a new race car so but uh, I'll make some more videos later for you guys, so you can see more of the car. So I sat down and I wrote an email to the builder, David Rieber from Underground Garage, telling him about the issues with the car. At this point, there were issues with the steering, there was issues with the wrap, um, there was issues with the fire, the, the wiring of the car, and um, yeah, stuff like that. So I sent him an email and uh, this is the reply I got. So this is the newest development. Have a read on this one. I recommend you to stop the video and then read first what I wrote and then read the reply. Seems that someone is now not gonna Pay me back what I'm owed for things that doesn't work and is broken on the car. This is just a small list. Now let me show you these things here on on the car. Let me show you. Yeah, what a fucking idiot. No, so I just wanted to prove to all you guys watching that I am least I'm not crazy and telling the truth. So. Is that paint that has come off the car, yes or no, when the film, the black film on the back of the car was removed? And, and you can, I mean, it's a clear as day. Someone didn't paint this the right way. The paint came off with the film, you know? How, how much more clear than that? You, you think quality, quality of the job? Look, this is the quality of the film job, you know? quality this is this is this is what a hundred five thousand 
gives you, you know, quality of uh, film job. The, not film, sorry, the wrap, wrap job. You know, this is the quality. That, that's what you're saying in your email, that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with this. You know, there's nothing wrong with all of that. That's what you're saying. That's that's what you deliver from Underground Mirage. <laughs> you know, that's the parts, that's the things that I want money back for. You know, because I'm going to have it redone. Look like that, you know. And why not race the car and also show the leaking wreck? Bear in mind. <laughs> Brand new car. Never drove it, not even once. Let's see if I can get this rag out. Yeah, there we go. So I dried it off. So there's not there's not so much leaking right now because I dried it all off, but you can clearly see it's leaking. You can clearly see the oil. On the rack. This is the oil. It's a leaking rack, you know? And I don't know for those of you who are Supra, uh, no, uh, who knows a lot about Supra, this is the power steering pump sits up there. This solenoid thing, that is from an Aristo. That doesn't fit for, for this application. This Aristo uses a completely different system with a solenoid that uh, limits your, uh, y how easy it is to turn based on how fast you're going with currents and blah blah whatever the fuck it is that pump just doesn't work on this application you know so i asked for a new pump and i asked for a new rack why wouldn't i it's a hundred and five thousand build you know that is what you get i mean that's so ridiculous so i'm just documenting these things that he's now also not gonna pay so we of course by this point now have broken off all communication and I am making these videos now, together with all the other ones, making it into one big fuck you underground garage and fuck you David Rieber video for all of you guys to see. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll meet him one day. We never know if I'm in Norway. Maybe we'll come see you. Nah? So, until then. Another issue that I didn't even show in the email is over the diff... Uh, in the uh, underneath and the car, uh, there's unprotected bodywork, uh, a little bit of rust that wasn't painted, and I just I didn't even mention it in the email. I just went ahead and cleaned it all up and resprayed it and sealed it and made it look nice. I just wanted to show you these pictures I took before I fixed it. So getting ready to go and test the car for the first time, been working on it for five days, trying to solve all the issues, but there are still issues left, but I need to go test it as much as I can so I can find out what the rest of the issues is with the car. So here I am uh, ready for leaving. I'm here at Solder Paddock Drift School to test the car for the first time. I did five minutes here on the parking lot and I can already feel as I said and as I suspected that there's something definitely wrong with the steering of the car. Um, I already ordered, because I knew it already, I already ordered a new rack and a new pump. Hopefully I can get some testing in here even though it's gonna be shit, but so that you know, I can find out what are the rest of the issues with the car. So that's kind of what my my day is going to be like. So it's the solder. And down here is a big parking spot. And uh, I think there's only eight eight cars that uh, the uh, eight guys have brought their own cars. So it's going to be really good. Um, other than that, it's kind of, um, it's kind of school. Um, what do you call it? Drift school where they can rent cars and just learn it. But we we in a different group, 
so I'm there's only eight cars in my group so it's gonna be okay tons of problems with the steering I'm trying to adjust the pressure on a little screw out there in the steering but it's not really working as I said before to the builder that there's something wrong with the steering you know but they don't listen so just a little video of some students playing around with the car but uh, can't really drift it because the steering is fucked yeah that's uh, how it is the rack is fucked and the pump is fucked so i ordered a new pump and rack already so anyways a little video for you
can feel, try to turn my wheel, try to turn it. There's something wrong. It has resistance and, the, and it flutters. I'm trying to adjust. Um, there's a pressure screw that I can adjust. Yeah. But uh, there's something wrong. I need to have a new rack and a new pump. Yeah. That's how it is. We well, you, you, you can play with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to see if uh, I have eating issues, if I have other issues, yeah. so that I can fix it all. I have a question for you. Yeah. When you come back yeah. later. When I come back? No. no. When you go back on the track yeah. uh, later. Yeah, yeah. A few minutes, yeah? Yeah. Can you take uh, this guy for a passenger ride? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. smoking from the turbo and uh, we can see that it had an oil leak how bad it was I will first find out at a later point when I come home but uh, here's a video someone took off it I think we need like a flashlight or something just to show no just just to show this just, just smoke yeah you can see it a lot yeah, yeah sure you can see it I done a few skits in the new drift car and as I said earlier the steering is complete bullshit in this car I ordered a new rack and I ordered a new pump and hopefully that will solve the issue so it's definitely completely fucked up um, everyone could see it everyone loves the car and I'm telling everyone who built it and everyone is laughing when they see the steering issues and also, everyone is concerned that my car caught catching on fire because it smokes so fucking much. And why does it do, do that? Because you have a massive return line, um, oil feed from turbo return line. There's a big leak there. And um, yeah, I remember it smoked also on the dyno a little bit and everybody just said, oh, it's gonna be oil in the, in the turbo boot, that it's gonna burn off, blah, blah, whatever the fuck, you know? That, is, that was also not fixed. But you know, that's what you get if you get something built in an underground garage. That is the quality of the stuff. Five days I've been working on the car to just make it ready to come here. I drove last night here, stayed until the morning, in my RV slipped here so I was ready for a full day I have a car full of fuel full of tires and I'm, I'm ready to race and I did I don't know an hour here and I have to now go back home because of these issues that I already knew was there so yeah anyways um, that's gotta be the last video or maybe I make a video in my shop once I fixed all the issues and put also in this uh, the road to formula drift build video documentary thing that I'm making anyways anyways that's it for now and uh, yeah have fun guys so uh, do you guys remember the email from earlier in this movie you know about uh, the rap job not being so bad and all of that stuff let's uh, let's have a look 
<laughs> what happened when I washed the car. I gave the car its first wash by hand. And remember, this is the this is the foliage job or the wrap job that Mr. David Rieber from Underground Garage said is his super job and it's okay and it's good enough and he doesn't want to pay back money for that wrap job because it's okay. First, first time I wash it by hand. I wash it by hand. <laughs> by hand. By hand. This car was washed. Not in a machine or something by hand. <laughs> you know, I think the result speaks for themselves, don't, don't they? You know? I mean, come on. Come on. That's the ridiculous. At least I am laughing. I'm having I'm having a laugh. Because you know it's so ridiculous by this time everything that what you can do other than just laugh. So you want more proof of the line that's going on? Okay, no problem. This is Facebook, Underground Garage um, Facebook page. And if you look at this video, you can also see here. Where is it? Oh, here. It's Kevin. Kevin posted this video. Underground Garage, they reshared it. And they write up here that the car is working good. Now that is my video. This is my friend Kevin who made this post. So let's go to Kevin's page. Here you are. Here you have Kevin's page. He's also a drifter, Formula, no, no, sorry, um, Nuremberg Green Drift Cup. He has uh, been on podium. He's been drifting in the UK, been on podium. So he's a, a known drifter, a known person. So let's go down. So Kevin, he was at my event at Solder, uh, where I was testing the car, and he just posted this post. Now, I also replied to the post, and as you can see, I am clearly writing that everything was not okay, and the car was not good, and there were some problems. Now, if you then go to my Facebook page, you can then, this is my Facebook page, you can then see here exactly... This is the same video also from Kevin and here is the description of actually what went on that day and that it didn't work and the car wasn't good and it was leaking oil in the turbo, that it was puffing blue smoke, that the steering is completely bullshit and I, after one and a half hour of, of trying to fix it I had to go home. So I missed the whole event, you know, I spent two days, one day getting there, one day to go home it was a complete disaster. Now, Kevin, which we were just on his page, back to Kevin. Kevin can also confirm that my steering was bullshit and that it was leaking oil and all of that stuff. Let's go back to my Facebook page. And this is also a video on my Facebook page <laughs> that Kevin made for me. Like a flashlight or something, just to show. No, just just show the, the just smoke. Yeah, you can see it a lot. Yeah. yeah, sure, you can see it. That is smoke you see now on a video of a video uh, on a car that's not running. That's a stopped car. That's just not on. That's how much smoke it is. So I mean, pretty much things speaks for itself by now. I just wanted to, sh to share this with you if anyone still has any doubt about my integrity and about if what I say is true or not, you know? It's, everything is 100% true that what I say and I have the proof to show it. You can ask Kevin or you can ask any of the 50 people that was on that event if my car was working good and everything was okay and you can ask them what time that I loaded my car and went home everyone can tell that after one and a half hours I had to put my tail between my legs put my car on the trailer and drive home you know a hundred and five thousand euro drift car and I was the only one that couldn't finish the event I had to go home so yeah, anyways, I just wanted to share this also. Bye, guys. After the first drift event, oh, drift event, after the first testing and with the leaking turbo, I it looks to me like I have to take the whole manifold off and everything. So all of this must come out off 
to have a look at what's going on with this turbo. I'm gonna take it apart and inspect it all and uh, yeah some videos uh, I gonna make more small clips as I go so I getting all the bolts and the hoses off down below I'm starting upstairs now to take off stuff I just took off this pipe and have a look inside the pipe there's oil inside the inside the the pipe this is um, that is not that's not right so I'm thinking I'm thinking in here yeah it's um there's oil in here you know so if there's also oil in here that means that the I'm guaranteeing no I'm not guaranteeing because I don't know but I'm betting that this turbo was not rebuilt after the issue with running with no oil and the whole fucking thing inside uh, the bearings or seals or whatever it's leaking inside and it's leaking here too that's what I think is going on anyways we will see I have to take it apart then I can I can ask the builder if he will own up and will have the turbo rebuilt if not I'll have to do it myself or I send it to to someone uh, to come Germany or come Norway or whatever who can rebuild it and if that all fails I will fucking get a precision turbo and I will put that on at least that is something I know about but let's see I didn't even see that before this is the other end of the of it if you can see it's also oil here you know and inside it's also kind of oily so oil has been leaking from inside the turbo and from from the, from the cold side of the turbo and then in and to the intercooler and stuff finally i have off this whole stuff here's the turbo you can see how much oil is in here and you can clearly see here all the oil here so the oil comes from inside here the shaft runs out here and would then leak out until the until onto the um, um, the return pipe and we thought that it was the return pipe that was leaking i don't think so i think it was from here running down there and then also of course leaking inside the um, uh, the hot area of the turbo making blue smoke in the exhaust so this is the whole issue so this turbo has to be rebuilt we will see if the builder he will rebuild it not himself but if he will pay for it i think the turbo came from krb trading that's kai uh, and i want him to rebuild it um, if the builder won't pay i will pay kai myself that is not a problem but anyways that was a little bit more information so this bearing or journal bearing that I think that it is rides in this here this here is groovy now this thing is super thin bluish in color was burned when the engine didn't have oil of course and then there are more issues along in here you can see how much oil is in this whole thing here that's a crazy I'm not sure I don't know if it's supposed to be like that but it's definitely not supposed to come out from this part of the shaft and that is also kind of bluish and this just looks funky let me take it apart here a little bit more and we can see the cup full with some shit and then we can see this here you can see how it looks no that's about it oh I sent an email to Underground Grass David Rieber telling him about he needs to give me a new turbo. This turbo is complete bullshit. I sent pictures and everything. And he has course just replied with some bullshit that I'm a moron and that there's no warranty and blah blah and whatever. You know, I've shown in the video to all of you guys already that the turbo was already smoking at on the dyno and I mean, I, I never drove the car. I mean, it, it haven't done one race even. So this is what you get if you deal with underground garage.
guys. So spread the word, make sure that other people don't get in the same situation as me. I don't really give a fuck about the money. I'm just gonna buy a new turbo and put that on together with the rack and all the other stuff, you know, and go make some mad skits and have fun. But uh, not everyone is as lucky as me. So I would really hate to see some guy who's been saving for many, many years to build his dream race car having to deal with bullshit like this. So please share, like, subscribe, um, tell others about it. And yeah, that's about it, guys. See you. So I, I want to thank everybody for watching this documentary movie and uh, I'm going to finish it now. This was an hour <laughs> of your time if you watched it all. Uh, I mean, anyways, um, this is what I had to say and this is what, what happened to my drift car build. I will surely fix the turbo stuff and I'll get the car back drifting. So hopefully in the future it will be fun, smoky, happy videos uh, from here on out. So um, bye guys and um, have fun and um, stay drifting and all of that good stuff. Bye bye.